Welcome this morning. Um, does anyone have any joys and concerns? We are certainly happy to see Jennifer and Hannah and Dupree and the puppy and um, Brooklyn. Um, and to see that Daryl is um, joining us, even though we can't see his, um, his happy face. So um, it, yes, Barbara. Um, so just for our new folks, you'll see yourself muted. That's because Isabel's managing the board, if you will, just to um, limit interference. Um, but at the end, we'll unmute, so no worries. Um, everybody, if you got your bulletin and you look at the bottom of it, especially, you'll see we have a benediction hymn. And it's one we know and love. Holly, holly. So what we'd love to see you do, since we don't have all the kids to run up front and grab a drum, is wherever you are, grab a couple of sticks, bang on the table, clap, anything, use your own percussion where you are so that you can fully enter in. Um, Brooklyn has started to stand up on her own and she is getting really good at it. So she will start be walking soon. So that's yay. Oh, more mischief. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Anything else? Yeah. This anyway, but I want to thank all of you for uh, uh, all of you who have contributed to my best birthday ever. Thank you. Any other announcements this morning? Then let's join in the call to worship. Let us pray. O oh God, light of the minds that know you, life of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you, help us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may fully serve you, whose service is drawn from and given in love. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us birth by water and Holy Spirit, teach us how to live always in integrity of body, mind, and spirit, and in obedience to your love. Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself, so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose so that no selfish interest may hinder us from knowing your will, no weakness keep us from doing it. Fill us with your spirit so that we may celebrate your glory. Hear us as we pray as Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With the psalmist, we sometimes feel like shouting, 
How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I be left to my own wits? How costly is our broken relationship with God when our sin keeps us from seeing that God is with us. Let us confess and trust the one who did not withhold his own beloved son to forgive us. Let us pray. O oh God, on lonely Mount Moriah, you put your servant Abraham to the test. We confess that we have failed much lesser tests of our faith. We have allowed sin to ruin our lives, to shape how we act toward others, and to kill our relationship with you. In your great mercy, forgive us. Make us instruments of your peace for the sake of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God provides for our weakness. All who are united in Christ in his death are united to Christ in his resurrection. The end is eternal life. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Holy God, I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has been good to me. Prayer of Illumination. Our Lord and our God, now as we hear your word, fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may delight in your presence. Sharpen our minds that we may discern your truth. Shape our wills that we may desire your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis, um, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of God. After these events, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. Abraham answered, I'm here. God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as an entirely burned offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. Abraham got up early in the morning, harnessed his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, together with his son Isaac. He split the wood for the entirely burned offering, set out, and went to the place God had described to him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place at a distance. Abraham said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will walk up there, worship, and then come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the entirely burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. He took the fire and the knife in his hand, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, my father, uh, Abraham said, I'm here, son. Isaac said, here's the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the entirely burned offering? Abraham said, the lamb for the entirely burned offering? God will see to it, my son. The two of them walked on together. They arrived at the place God had described to him. Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. But the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham said, I'm here. The messenger said, don't stretch out your hand against the young man and don't do anything to him. I now know that you revere God and didn't hold back your son, your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a single ram caught by its horns in the dense underbrush. Abraham went over, took the ram, offered it as an entirely burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place, the Lord sees. That is the reason people today say, on this mountain, 
the Lord is seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget an answer to my prayer? No tokens of your love I see. Your face is turned away from me. I wrestle with despair. How long, O Lord, will you forsake and leave me in this way? When will you come to my relief? My heart is overwhelmed with grief by evil night and day. How long, O Lord, but you forgive with mercy from above. I find that all your ways are just. I learn to praise you and to trust in your unfailing love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. It happens unexpectedly. Driving down the road engrossed in a program or the music on the radio and a horrible sound intrudes. A mechanical sounding voice comes on to explain that what has jarred us into alert attention. The voice says something along the lines of, this is a test of the emergency broadcast system. And if this had been an actual emergency, news and information would follow. This concludes the test. This is a test. Just as in the book of Job, the reader knows something that the participants in the story do not. Abraham might have felt like he is now in a real emergency situation and desires further instruction when he hears God say, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as an entirely burnt offering there on one of the mountains that I will show you. Regardless of how many times we have heard this story, it is shocking and unreasonable. There is no way to get around the horror of what is being asked of Abraham and of Isaac. This is the last significant story we have in Abraham's long saga. The story ends as it began with God telling Abraham to go. In the beginning, God, Abraham is told to go from his country, his kin and his father's house to the land that God will show him. Abraham is being asked to do an incredibly difficult thing, to leave everything he knows, all that he loves for the unknown. The difficulty of all that pales in comparison to what he is being asked to do now. And yet again, he is told to go. Go and take this gift of a long-awaited child. Take what is most precious and most loved in his life and destroy it. What, Abra what Abraham was thinking so many years earlier, what was Abraham thinking so many years earlier when he had packed and left his father and his home? What is Abraham thinking now as the donkey is saddled the wood for the fire gathered, and as he sets out with Isaac, the fulfillment of God's promise by his side. We don't know what he is thinking, only that to both calls to go, Abraham responds and faithfully sets out. It has not always been that way with Abraham, that he has acted faithfully, there have been times when Abraham has not trusted God, 
and even has put God's promise at risk. Twice, Abraham passes Sarah off as his sister. Pharaoh took her for a wife, and King Abimelech tried to do the same, risking a birth other than what God intended. Rather than wait for God to fulfill the promise of a child for Abraham and Sarah, they decide to have a child for Abraham with Hagar, Sarah's servant. When God reiterates the promise of a child for Abraham and Sarah, both of them reveal their skepticism in a turn at doubling over in laughter. As Frederick Buechner has playfully retold God's repeated announcement of a son for Abraham and Sarah, Abraham, still laughing, says, shall a child be born in the geriatric ward? Shall Medicare pick up the bill? There are times when Abraham has thought God's promises were simply beyond what even God could do, and his actions have reflected his lack of trust. God's test of Abraham comes after these things. God's intention, as he told Abraham long ago, is to form a people, a nation, through his relationship with Abraham. Abraham will be blessed because of his relationship with God, and through his descendants, all the people of earth will also be blessed. These people will be distinctive because of their identity as God's own. And yet the person who stands at the beginning of this line has at times not revealed the special relationship he has with God. God is staking his claim with Abraham. Humanity has disappointed God before, at the garden, before the flood, at the Tower of Babel. Abraham has disappointed God as his trust in God's care and God's promise has wavered. Can God now count on Abraham to be faithful? Abraham does not know this is a test, and yet we do. So this must be a lens through which we view this story. The stakes are high in this test for both God and Abraham. Isaac is the long-awaited child of the promise. What will happen to God's plan for a people if he is sacrificed? Abraham has already lost his other son, Ishmael, his first son, a son who he, who he also loved. It was with deep anguish that Abraham had sent Ishmael and Hagar into the wilderness. God gives a promise to Abraham about Ishmael. A people will be formed from him as well. That promise lies in the future. In the present, Abraham knows wilderness. And he knows that without support, survival will take an act of God. That act came as God showed Hagar a well, providing water just as her son was at the point of death. Abraham knows none of this. God's promise is future hope. Present reality is that Ishmael has very likely perished. Abraham had been distressed when Sarah told Abraham to get rid of Ishmael and Hagar. It is impossible to believe that he is not distressed at God's words to him about Isaac. Abraham has faltered in his journey with God. His lack of trust in God and God's promises has been shown in his actions, but not this time. As he had done with Ishmael, Abraham arises early the next morning to get on with what he must do. He sets out for the mountains with Isaac beside him. It is difficult to see anything in this story beyond the horror of it and the incomprehensible act that is being requested of Abraham. There's a Yiddish folk tale where the question is asked, why did God not send an angel to tell Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? The answer is, because God knew no angel would take on such a task. Instead, the angels said, if you want to command death, do it yourself. But it is part of Abraham's story, this story, and so it come, becomes part of our story as people of faith. Some of the details we want to know about, the writers have determined not to be necessary to the story. 
we think about the psychological trauma Isaac must have suffered or the effect on Sarah when she learns what almost happened. These things are important, especially when we consider the impact of physical and emotional abuse when relationships of trust are broken in families. And also when we consider that scripture has at times been misused to validate subjugation of another person. In this story, the incomprehensible nature of what is being asked of Abraham, the great trauma and risk to innocent life draws our attention of what is being asked. Yet the story keeps nudging us to look elsewhere. This story is about the relationship between God and Abraham. We are told this is a test and that God, and that that means that God never really intended for Isaac to be sacrificed, only to see if Abraham would pass this most extreme test. And yet the level of risk is real and there is risk for all involved, for God, for Abraham and for Isaac. And so it is a real test. Later in the story of God's people, God sends manna to feed the people in the wilderness. It falls freely to the ground to provide for the needs of the people who are told to gather only enough for their needs, but no more, except when they will need to gather more for the Sabbath. The same word for test is used here as is used with Abraham. The first week that the manna falls, the people fail, but a faithful God continues to provide. We get a clue that Abraham has learned something of God. When his dear child turns to him and asks about the lamb needed for the offering, Abraham resp responds with the words, God will provide. These are words of assurance for Isaac but they also invite God into the test. Abraham has his hand on the knife. Artists have depicted it as raised against the boy or even already resting at his throat. The exact position does not matter for it is a moment too close for comfort. One slip of the knife will wipe out God's promise. God does provide. The angel speaks and calls Abraham's name, telling him not to harm the boy. Both God and Abraham have learned something about each other. Abraham's trust in God is sure. He did not withhold even his most precious gift, but did so in the confidence expressed in God's ability and willingness to provide what is needed. This story has long been seen as a prefiguration of Jesus and his passion. The anguish is real, and the ordeal of the fathers cannot be separated from that of each of the sons. Both require faithfulness and trust. The angel stops Abraham's hand. Abraham looks and sees the ram. Some might call it coincident, but Abraham knows that this is no random act. The Lord has provided. It is the meaning of the name Moriah, meaning God will provide. And that is the name given to that place. It is God's provision and the act of seeing and recognizing God's providing in this story that reveal God and Abraham's deepening relationship. Abraham looks up and sees the mountain to which God is leading him. He tells his son that God will provide. At the worst and most desperate moment of his life, he looks up to see the ram that God has provided. Yet God's vision also progresses as the relationship deepens. God sees the need to provide and Abraham's trust that he will do so. Rams caught in thickets and manna in the wilderness and wells in the desert. God's providing for God's people comes in many forms. May we, like Abraham, have eyes to see. And now to the one who by the 
power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than we can ask or imagine. To God be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. For this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us together look to the Lord. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Lord, that you have fed us with your word. Grateful for your gifts and mindful of the communal nature of your saints, we offer to you our prayers. God of compassion, we remember before you the poor and the afflicted, the sick, prisoners, and all who are lonely, the victims of war, injustice, and inhumanity, and all others who suffer from whatever their sufferings may be named. The Lord of Providence, holding the destiny of the nations in your hand, we pray for our country. Inspire the hearts and minds of our leaders that they, together with all of our nation, may seek first your kingdom and righteousness so that order, liberty, and peace may dwell with your people. O oh God, the creator, we pray for all nations and peoples. Take away the mistrust and lack of understanding that divide your creatures. Increase in us the recognition that we are all your children. O oh, Savior God, look upon your church and its struggle upon the earth. Have mercy on its weakness, bring to an end its unhappy divisions, and scatter its fears. Look also upon the ministry of your church, increase its courage, strengthen its faith, faith and inspire its witness to all people, even to the end of the earth. We ask all this in the holy name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. As we think about the ways that we offer ourselves and our resources to God, let us come together in our offerings. When the hands reach out and fingers trace the beauty of a loved one's face, we thank you, God, that love relies on gifts of grace not seen with eyes. And when the ways we learn and grow are not the ways we used to know, we thank you, God, that we have learned your love's a gift and never earned. Your spirit gives us differing ways to serve you well and offer praise when all are joined as one will be. Able, strong community. Let us pray together. Good and holy God, for your steadfast love and faithfulness, we give you thanks and bless your name. Let our whole lives become songs of gratitude, joy, and praise, so that all the earth may know that we are your people and you are our God. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Learn the ways of God, for they are the ways of life. Trust in Jesus Christ, the Son, for he is the way to God. Live by the power of the Holy Spirit, who will show you the love of Jesus. God protect you when the threats of life howl around you. Christ protect you when shades of sin creep within you. Spirit of God sustain you from everlasting to everlasting. May God, who is three in one, bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, apologies didn't go as it was supposed to during the offering. Um, Isabel had something very lovely to share. So I don't know if you can do it now, Ease. You can't do it because I have it. Yeah. You want me to try again? I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess. Y'all can talk. Yeah. I'll, I'll just put it up. You can talk over it. <laughs> well, what, what, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Let's see if this works. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Oh. 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 Yeah, let me get back to the beginning. How do I do that? You had to go. That's beautiful. Hit slide beautiful. at the bottom. Okay. Let me go back one. 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 Yeah. Play. Okay, just imagine that song now. <laughs> oh, you this to sing it again. Oh, Beautiful. slideshow. Mm. Mm. Start singing, Barbara. Come on. Oh, uh, already it once. Once a charm. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Oh. I will give you the words to one of the verses that I did sing. When the ways we learn and grow are not the ways we used to know, we thank you, God, mm. that we have learned your love is a gift never earned. Mm. Look at that. Oh. oh, that's nice. That's very nice. When did you guys go and do that? Um, that was a hundred percent Isabel, and we did it yesterday. Oh, wow! That's that is very good. So beautiful. That's nice. Cool. It makes me want to tear up, Isabel. Oh, it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. Oh. Well done, Isabel. Oh. Yes. Beautiful. That's nice. Very nice. Mm. Oh, oh, it's all of them. They all are. So cool. Come on. Hey, Isabel, we won't mind seeing that again. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you, Isabel. That was oh, wonderful. It goes oh, oh, nice. oh, my gosh. That's cool. <clears throat> Didn't know you could make it do that. <laughs> Isabel, thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I guess. It's so good to see everybody. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah.